What's going on guys? This is Chris with Dex Fitness. Welcome to the channel. If you are new to powerlifting and you're wanting to buy yourself a weightlifting belt to help with performance on your max lifts, then buying a belt can be a bit intense, especially if you don't really know what you're getting. And there's a lot of misleading information on the internet that can really lead you down the wrong path. So whether you're a new lifter or just an experienced powerlifter who just wants to know the difference between the two belts, then you came to the right video. But let's start off with the visuals. On the prong belt, there are different holes that the prong can attach to and therefore it can fit different sizes of people. On the lever belt, however, it is a fixed position. So it can only stay in this one position the whole entire time unless you want to unscrew it and move it to a different position. So the prong belt is much different in the way it latches compared to the lever belt. So if you're bloated or you're working out with your buddies, you can easily change the size of the belt on the fly. However, if you were to be bloated or working out with a buddy on a gym session and he really wants to use a belt, he cannot use this belt. And in order for you to loosen up the belt a bit, you'd have to unscrew that like I just mentioned. However, if you are on a consistent diet, most likely you won't be bloated whenever you go to the gym. So if that's the case, the lever belt is not a bad choice for you. Obviously, both belts, since they are leather and thick material, will need to be broken in. And I have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do that in the description down below. So you can check that out if you're wanting to know how to break in your belt. Now, within the lifting community, one of the biggest things why people love the lever belt is that it can get much tighter. Now, that is a very controversial subject because you don't want the belt to be all that tight. You want it to be tight, but not so tight that you can't breathe. And if you know how to use a weightlifting belt properly, you would understand what I'm talking about. When you're using the belt, you wanna make sure that you have enough room that you can expand your core and really brace your abs in order to keep that spine as neutral as possible. If the belt is super tight, then that will not happen. So that is not the reason why you should buy the lever belt. And having a belt that is too tight is worse than having no belt at all. So that kind of debunks that argument for the lever belt. Just doesn't make any sense to have it that tight. Let's go back to the prong belt again. You can either get a single prong or a double prong. My preference if I was getting a pronged belt, I would get a single prong because it's easier to attach and unattach, especially after those heavy lifts. Um, the only issue, if you get a single prong, make sure that the prong system itself is tough and won't be prone to breaking. Another thing I want you to take notice on is this, this roller right here. You wanna make sure that that is a very tough material. So this belt has a very strong roller. And another benefit to the prong belt is that if you were to be squatting, deadlifting, or overhead pressing, or what have you, most likely you're gonna have it in different positions on your core, and within the different positions, we'll need different tightnesses. So if you're a little bit higher, you most likely wanna loosen up just a little bit. And if you're a bit lower, like mid-waist, you can probably tighten it just a bit more. So that's the benefits to the prong belt. And like I mentioned before, the prong belt would be good if you're sharing a belt with your buddies, but your buddies should have their own belt. And if they're just jumping in, and wanting to try out the belt with their max lift, it's probably not the best time to do that because if you're first wearing a belt, you wanna make sure that you're practicing on light weight just to get familiar with the belt itself. I'm not saying that you need to use the belt on every light weight lift, but you should just practice with the belt on light weight lifts before you start going to max weight lifts with the belt. I'm going to explain exactly why I would prefer the lever belt over the prong belt. The prong belt so far has a lot more advantages compared to the lever belt. The lever belt, for me, is a better choice. I don't really change positions through squat, deadlift, and I don't overhead press with the belt. But if I were to overhead press with the belt, I'm sure I could use the same size with my waist. So I'm always on the same position with my belt. I also have a very consistent diet, so if I'm not really bloating, and I don't really have an expanding stomach one day and a deflated stomach the next. So I am very consistent with my diet and what I'm eating. So this belt fits me, let's say 95% of the time perfectly. And I'm pretty good at controlling what I eat. But the biggest reason why I like the lever belt is that when I get done with a heavy lift, I can easily just unlatch it and release my waist from all that tension. With the lever belt, especially a two-prong lever belt, 
you most likely be putting in, sucking in your waist, trying to pull the, the latch out all while expending all your energy just trying to do that. And I've had to do that so many times, it's not very comfortable. And if you have a double prong belt, that's, that makes that job a lot harder. Single prong, it's a bit easier, but still tough, still a pain in the butt. So that, once again, that's why I like the lever belt better because it's much more convenient in my opinion. Now, if you're a new power lifter and this is a new thing to you, it's really all down to your preferences. But if I were to recommend a belt for, let's say one of my clients, I would probably tell them to get a single prong belt. It's very versatile, easy to use, and it's just a great beginner belt all around. Um, but I would of course make sure that they get the right type of latching mechanism and all that fun stuff. However, if you're like me with a consistent diet and you don't really blow all that much, you use the same belt positioning on most um, lifts that would use a belt, then this lever belt would be a good bet for you. But once again, it's all down to your preferences. And if you have any more questions or concerns, go ahead and put them in the description down below. So I'll be sure to get to them as soon as possible. But I'll go ahead and put both these belts in the description down below so you can check them out for yourself. Um, price, I know price is a big one for people and usually lever belts are more uh, expensive, but I think for good reason. But thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and press that like button, subscribe, and press that notification bell to be sure to keep up to date with, with all my future content. But guys, this is Chris. Always appreciate one another. I'll see you next time.